Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George. We're all George. So, one of the biggest upgrades ever for Bitcoin is coming. It's dubbed Taproot, and it is coming later this year. So, what is Taproot? How does it upgrade Bitcoin, and why is this significant? Well, let's discuss, among other things. So thanks for tuning in. As always, smash the like, subscribe to the channel. Two streams every day, 11.30 and 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Although weekends, you know, it might vary a little bit. So make sure, make sure you get notified by hitting that notification bell and follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. All right, guys, uh, let's do this. Welcome, everyone. I see a lot of people, a lot of people very enthusiastic today. They want to they wanna hear more about Taproot. Um, all right. So uh, looking at Bitcoin, Bitcoin, you know, it's still going sideways. It's a little bit lower, 3550. I know this, I think this morning or very late at night, Bitcoin fell down a little bit further, about 34.7. Now come up a little bit at 35.5. You know, overall, if you zoom out, you just realize that, yeah, all this volatility is not really, I mean, we're just, Bitcoin's going sideways right now. It's stuck between 43,000 and 31,000, and we hit 31,000 a couple of times, one, two, three times, and right now we're like pretty much smack in the middle. Um, my stream recently has been talking about media FUD, media-driven FUD, and that still exists. You still have the big players that's trying to cause you to, to lose your Bitcoin, they want your Bitcoin, and that is still ongoing. But overall, you know what? Those of us that know we're on the right path, the righteous path, the, the, the path to break through uh, current financial systems tyranny, I mean, we're holding. We're holding, right? We're not going to listen to the, to the, to the people that, that are trying to say one thing but really doing another. You know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me, right? So we have to learn from these past mistakes. We have to learn from these past, uh, past, um, um, yeah, past actions. And we need to move forward. We need to move forward together. We need to stay stronger, right? And we're going to get through this. We're going to get through this. So right now we're kind of in that iffy period, going sideways a little bit. A lot of people anticipating that we're going to see some massive volatility. Maybe it happens. Maybe it doesn't, right? The strategy still stays the same. Um, all right. So before I get into, uh, I guess, CMC, let's talk about let's talk about this big upgrade. Taproot. Bitcoin is going to have a soft fork. This is not a hard fork. Soft fork is basically a network upgrade that all, all miners have to agree to. And, uh, and in this case, 90% have agreed to it. So uh, this is, this is going to come. This is going to be in effect later this year in November. The timing is very interesting. Timing is very, very interesting. You know, most of the gains in 2017 came from after November. It was November to December. So most of the gains for Bitcoin happened in basically one to two months. Um, so this year, obviously, we had tremendous growth from the beginning of the year to now we're having some some weakness. But I do anticipate Bitcoin will continue on later this year. We may have to wait a month or two months, three months, four months. Right. But still, that sets us up. That sets us up around September, October, November time frame when also Taproot is set to to come alive. Interesting timing. Interesting timing. Anyways, what is Taproot? Well, throughout Bitcoin's history, there has been some hard, soft forks, some hard forks, unfortunately, well, contentious hard forks, but the soft forks are basically a number upgrade, and we had a few over the years. Segwit was one of them, and that came a few years ago. So this is going to be the biggest one and arguably even more important than, than Segwit. So what is Taproot? Well, Taproot does a few things. First of all, it does add some privacy features into Bitcoin, just some, not completely, just some. It does propose to add this new uh, Schnorr signature, which also combines multiple signatures together. And 
And it does allow Bitcoin to operate a little bit more efficiently, handle a little bit more transactions, and be a little bit cheaper. But this is basically preparing Bitcoin for the next stage, the next evolution, um, which is all these layer twos that are coming on board. And Bitcoin is going to be able to operate scripts that will utilize those layer twos for faster transactions and, and possibly even DeFi and make the whole thing just work a little bit better. So that's what Taproot is all about. Uh, I could explain more in detail here. Uh, can we... Craig, I'm not going to repeat that. I'm not going to repeat that. Um, but thank you. <laughs> um, all right, uh, Matt. Hey, I'm not even finished. You're interrupting. Um, there seems to be an internal battle between TA guys saying that we're going to start the, the year cycle. And the fundamental group that's where it's consolidating. I like fundamentals. You know, everyone, everyone has their own opinion. As long as they keep everyone focused and in the game, I have no problem with that. But there's too many TA folks that only concentrate on short term and, you know, they miss out on the bigger picture or they purposely talk about short term because their audience only wants to know what happens tomorrow or the day afterwards. And they're guessing. Um, so, I mean, as long as everyone keeps everyone focused on the righteous path to financial freedom, right, that is the way that that's ultimately what we could ask for. Right. It doesn't matter which side you're on. Or you can use both. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be one or the other. But I tend to focus on longer, longer, uh, the bigger picture, long game, right? And that's why I concentrate on fundamentals. All right. So what, what, what? I kind of explained overall what Taproot. Here's a, I guess a, a more detailed uh, explanation. Taproot is a soft fork that improves Bitcoin scripts to increase privacy and improve upon other factors related to complex transactions. Transaction on Bitcoin network that can use various features that make them more complex, including time lock releases, multi-signature requirements, and others. Interesting. So part of Bitcoin scripts, a lot of the things that we take for granted with smart contracts, um, you know, is there's bits and pieces of that that is coming to Bitcoin. One of them is time lock releases, which is really interesting. So you think about it. So you can actually create a contract and say, you know what, at this given time, then execute, right? So right now you could do that with many layers, um, many layers of coding and utilizing oracles and utilizing uh, smart contracts. But you know this is one of the things that that is coming. Also, multi-signature requirements. Also in here it talks about how um, if you're utilizing, say, Lightning Network to make payments or a peer-to-peer -peer transaction or a sophisticated smart contract including the time lock and multi-signature and other things, right? If you're going to be running like smart contracts and all these transactions happen, Taproot can also hide all those transactions. So it looks like there's only one transaction from person A to point person B. But in between that, there could have been like five or, or six other transactions that will be hidden. So it makes Bitcoin transactions somewhat private. Not everything, not completely, not the whole chain becomes like Monero. But if you happen to say, I don't know, you use Lightning Network to send a payment to someone, that person sends it to some kind of contract, that contract executes and sends it back to you or, or some other thing that happens in between, right? All this could be hidden. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So that's, that's one big aspect is hiding multiple transactions within one single transaction um, among other things I mentioned about you know the smart you know utilizing um, scripts and and uh, making Bitcoin a little bit a little bit more like some of these other chains also there's something else called Schnorr signatures which will basically combine multiple signatures together um, so if you're basically if you have multiple parties involved in the transactions the signatures can be aggregated into a single signature. So that's pretty cool, I guess, too. Um, and also, it'll benefit Bitcoin by making things more efficient. I mentioned that. Reduce the amount of data to be transferred and stored in a blockchain. That's good. More transactions per block, meaning higher throughput, yes, and lower transaction fees. And these are always good things. These are always good things. I don't know how, how much it's really go improve things. Bitcoin right now can handle about five to eight transactions per second and the fees are 
I don't know. I think they're within reason. You know, ten. Ten dollars right now. Um, I think it's a, it depends on the situation, but sometimes five to ten dollars. Um, so if, obviously, if you're sending large amounts, that's not a big deal. If you're spending small amounts, yeah, that could affect things, right? So I don't know how much this lowers transaction fees as well. But you know what? That's Taproot. So there's a lot of things, a lot of things that is coming to Bitcoin that could potentially make it closer to 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 money status to basically. Um, becoming a currency that could be used day to day doesn't doesn't fully get us there, but it does make it somewhat easier to get to that status. So besides the store value could also be a medium exchange. Also, it makes it a little bit closer to say something like Ethereum because now there's scripts and possibly smart contracts that could be running, right? And it also makes Bitcoin a little bit quicker and a little bit less expensive. So. A lot, a lot of things. As you can see, this is probably one of the most significant, if not the most significant, upgrade to Bitcoin since its existence. This is this is a pretty big deal, and this is coming in November. November. So that is only five months away. Five months away before the end of the year. All right. So that is what I want to leave with. So what what are the implications to this? Can this drive Bitcoin up tremendously afterwards? Sure, it can because it makes Bitcoin better and more useful and cheaper. And of course, I, I mentioned because this is toward the end of this year, this falls in line with when Bitcoin usually pumps the most at the end of a cycle, which is the last few months of the last year, right? So this also is placed right within there. So can this really drive Bitcoin higher and get more adopted and more usage and more attention and more countries possibly making bitcoin legal tender yes hell yes to all of those things so this is very 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 nice very nice all right so moving away from here what else is there well uh, i decided to pull up the crypto greed and fear index and today is actually not so bad it's at 28 remember not too long ago we were down in the tens and 15th People are, again, getting used to and getting comfortable with these levels, although we're not in greed mode, but we're, we're, we're starting to, to, to not be as fearful, which is good. But I did make a video and, and utilize this index over time as a bottom indicator, and it's looking more and more and more like a bottom indicator. So if you look at this, and this is spanned over many, many years, going back to February 2018, you can see whenever there's like clumps like this where fear is locked in between like a certain value or a range of values, like in this case, it's like 10 and 20. You could see that whatever Bitcoin actually just, you know, the fear stays there. That's actually a pretty good bottom indicator that actually happened when Bitcoin fell down to about $31,000, uh, $3,100, this point right here. Now, this point right here was from last year when Bitcoin fell down to 38,000 due to the COVID and pandemic. You could see, again, like a cluster of fear right here, right? So, yeah, that's actually pretty good. And, I mean, a pretty good bottom indicator, I mean. And right now you're saying, you know, we're seeing that cluster form again. It's, it's a little bit wider, a taller, because we did fall down to 10s. And then we come up to about, you know, 27, 28. So it's a little bit wider uh, scale or a higher scale, but you could see there is definitely a cluster building here, right? And I think that's a pretty positive thing. If it builds here for a while, that could mean that this is also a bottom indicator, right? There's still a lot of people, TA people, whoever, that are making guesses. Uh, Bitcoin go down to 20,000. I, I, I've saw this article now, now saying that people are expecting Bitcoin to go down to 10,000 and stuff. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of far reaching guesses right now, again, driving a lot of fear in the market. But if you look at what has happened right now, Bitcoin, despite weak, despite the manipulation and the, and the FUD, still holding strong in the 30s. And that is why this clump for fear indicators also forming more and more. And that could be the bottom indicator we're looking for that. Yeah, this is the bottom and it may stay here for a while. But when it's ready, it's going to come right back up. And I truly believe that's going to happen. What's interesting is I, I uh, started looking at this from a bottom indicator. This could also be used as a top indicator. 
Because look at this. When Bitcoin hit 60,000, look at this. A lot of it was up here, right? So maybe going forward, we could also use this as a top indicator or a temporary top indicator, I should say, and a temporary bottom indicator, I should say. This is not the, 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 the one that's going to measure the ultimate top or ultimate bottom, but it gives you a good idea. It gives you a good idea. Um, all right. Speaking of FUD, speaking of FUD, JP Morgan is still driving more FUD. So, of course, El Salvador recently, their big news. Um, JP Morgan is not impressed. They're not impressed at all. Obviously, IMF is not impressed. IMF is still going after um, El Salvador because they don't they don't like the fact that they they just embraced Bitcoin. They want to break free from the IMF and everyone else, right? But you look at this for investment bank JP Morgan. The move to Bitcoin is no cause for celebration. There's clearly important implications for that country. Analysts wrote in a note today. But it is difficult to see any tangible economic benefits associated with Bitcoin, adopting Bitcoin as a second form of legal tender. Well, of course, J.P. Morgan would say that because J.P. Morgan are probably behind what's going on right now with this whole ESG movement, with this whole environmental concerns about Bitcoin. Right. J.P. Morgan recently has come out with a lot of articles saying, hey, institutional investors are not getting in, so you should not either. And. And they've been they've been causing a lot of FUD. They've been causing a lot of FUD. So it does not surprise me that they're going to come out and say, oh, this is not a big deal. It would have surprised me quite a bit if they came out and said, oh, yeah, this is a big deal. Right. But no, of course, they're not going to say anything positive because what are they trying to do? They want to retain their power. They want to retain their power as the biggest bank on the on, on the planet. But really. That's not true anymore. Bitcoin is the biggest bank by far. It's multiple times of what JP Morgan is. But JP Morgan doesn't like that. They want to retain their power. They want to be the biggest bank in the world, right? And while they're keeping things, uh, keeping you know news fearful, people fearful, they're secretly they're secretly buying. They're secretly buying. They've been talking about this Bitcoin fund of theirs for quite some time. And, you know, to have a fund, you need to have a lot of Bitcoins. So they've been secretly buying behind the scenes, too, while driving this FUD, right? So, again, a lot of this, a lot of this is going on, and we just need to ignore it. We need to ignore it. These, these wicked companies, okay? They're going to do what they're going to do. They're corrupt. They're part of the elitist system. They're part of the people that are pulling the strings, okay? But... But the one thing that the one thing that could break us and and everyone else involved or that's tied into this these strings is Bitcoin and crypto. It's really a game changer. And now these big players are panicking. They really don't know what to do. They're doing what they can to try to stop the growth. But it's these are these are band-aids. They can't stop the bull, the Bitcoin bull, <laughs> the, the charge you know, is ongoing and it's not going to stop. So these guys are doing what they can temporarily, but long term. Yeah, they're this is a losing battle for them. They know this can't be stopped. This is out of the bag. It's one of those things. Pandora's box. Once you open it, you can't put it back. This is what it is for Bitcoin. All right. Um, moving on. What else is there? I saw this. Um, people are trying to correlate whether or not meme stocks like GME and AMC, whether or not they uh, cause Bitcoin to go up. Like, is there a correlation between when they pump and Bitcoin pumps? I mean, I, I think there's some correlation, but obviously you can't. There's no true correlation one way or another. You go have a lot of retail people that is pumping GME and now more so AMC. And, uh, you know, of course, some of them also happen to be in crypto, right? And it's vice versa too. People that are in crypto also happen to be in stocks. It goes both ways. So obviously when you have one side making a whole lot of money, some of that money will flow into the other side and vice versa. In this case, I would say not so much Bitcoin, but more so like, let's say Dogecoin. I think that makes more sense where AMC and GME would affect Dogecoin more than, than, than Bitcoin. Um, so obviously there's some kind of correlation, but my point to this is, you know, we just all need to stick together. I think it's very important that we already have this rift between gold bugs and primarily it's because of Peter Schiff, 
right? Bitcoin and gold and silver, ultimately, they all have the same purpose, and that is to hedge against inflation and to be a store of value, right? And uh, but you know, because of Peter Schiff and all these these guys have been bashing Bitcoin for years, uh, that's why you can't really get gold bugs and Bitcoin bugs to to play nicely. But you know, with with stocks, you know, with the the, the new generation of investors, um, you know, they're 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 proving a point that. Oh, hey, just a whole bunch of retail investors that doesn't know a whole lot. They stand together uh, for a cause and they're trying to stick it to the guys that are that are in control. Right. Just like I mentioned about JP Morgan, all these guys, the, the, the hedge funds of the world that have been in control and doing a lot of shorting and controlling, you know, it just shows that these guys that band together. They can cause change. They can cause change, right? And that's what we want in crypto world too. So there shouldn't be any bashing. It should be everyone tries to get along, right? And uh, and it's the same thing with Dogecoin. I still think people hate Dogecoin and bash Dogecoin for the same reasons. Mostly probably because of Elon, and I still hate Elon. Um, but I think it's just kind of the same thing. There's like people that really hate it. But you know what? Dogecoin also brings a lot of people into the space. And those people you know, tend to stay and do research and get into other projects in this space. So, you know, you can't really bash Dogecoin for that. I mean, that is actually a very promising thing, a very good thing. Um, Jeff asks, XRP breakout soon? Well, people have been uh, asking that for five years and it still hasn't happened yet. So you tell me <laughs> XRP has still not come anywhere close to its previous highs of 380. So I don't know about that, Jeff. I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, but this is a good set. This is a good time to plug my new sponsor, uh, Weeble. So if you are into stocks or Dogecoin or even Bitcoin and crypto or options or ETFs, right? Take a look at Weeble because they do allow you to trade everything absolutely free. So check them out. And they will give you two stocks if you open your account and deposit. Who knows? Who knows? You might get some AMs, AMC and GME stock. <laughs> um, all right. What else is there? Uh, speaking of meme coins, Thailand, all of a sudden, their SEC, their equivalency of SEC, it's also called SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, decided to ban meme coins, fan tokens, and NFTs. Very, very, very interesting. Very interesting. So they're not even banning projects that they deem are, are, are like scams. They're just banning all these, all these categories, even though they may be legit, even though, I mean, even NFTs, I mean, it kind of shows you, um, they're, they're really strict. They're really strict. So number one, meme tokens have no clear objective or substance or underlying and whose price running on social media trends. Well, you could argue that, yeah, they have no clear objective and stuff like that. So does that mean they're going to not allow meme stock trading either? Because you could make the same argument that, yeah, they're, the price is running from social media and maybe they have no clear objective other than to prove a point. It's kind of weird, kind of weird. And then also what about fan tokens, right? Influencers, celebrities that come out with their own tokens, they go ban that too. Hmm. And lastly, non-fungible tokens. So any NFT project is going to be banned. And that's very, very interesting. Very interesting. Although they didn't name something like Doge or Shiba, whether or not they're included in the meme tokens that will be banned. It's kind of, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I, I, th I, think, I think this is the bad move. I think this is a bad move. It doesn't make... A whole lot of sense, especially with NFTs. You know, there's there's some prominent NFT projects out there, and what what ultimately they're doing is just basically creating a new form, uh, a new property, a, a new IP, a new way to to come out with, I don't know, um, a new investment, new asset, new property, however you define it. And of course, we know that NFTs are very hot right now. I have another article about it. So there's nothing illegitimate about it. You know, people want it. Why, why ban that, right? The same thing with fan tokens. Like, there's a lot of celebrities that come out with their own tokens. It's more of a support thing, 
why ban that either? And beam coins too. I, I get it. I get, you know, they don't want like safe moons of the world um, to, to, to take over. But still, there's a lot. Like, what about Doge, right? Or is that going to get banned? I mean, there's a lot of people that support it. Yeah, very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, what else is there? Danny, thank you. How would Harmony's one BTC bridge do that they have coming? How do bridges work? Basically, it transfers. It allows the ability to transfer one token from one chain to another chain. So it would be it would have the ability to transfer both ways that one tokens to BDC's network and BDC's network back. So that's how it would work. Manjet, that's what I try to do. Try to try to add some value to every one of my streams, which is really hard because two streams every day, oof, it's really hard to keep going. Um, all right, speaking of NFTs, so it turns out the person that paid almost $12 million for an NFT, a CryptoPunk NFT, uh, is none other than one of the co-founders of DraftKings, who is now a billionaire. So yes, if you're a billionaire spending $12 million for a CryptoPunk NFT, I guess that's within reason, right? For everyone else. 12 million for an NFT just seems like that's ridiculous, that uh, ludicrous. Um, but yeah, uh, what is this guy's name? Shalom McKenzie, uh, who is also a board member. Why did he why did he buy it? Well, to quote, I really wanted this particular crypto punk. It is part of the alien connection, which is the rarest of the punks and the only alien that has a mask. I thought it was symbi symbiotic of COVID and the popularization of NFTs. See, that second part makes a lot of sense, right? So if this is going to be one of the only or if the first CryptoPunk that actually wears a mask and it, can, uh, it came out during COVID, right? This could have real value in the future, right? Five years from now, 10 years from now, NFTs become mainstream and as valuable as and collected, collected as uh, much as art, like real you know, art, physical art on your wall, right? That I could see how this could be worth so much, so much, right? Because it is symbiotic to COVID. So that's the reason. And now you know who who uh, <laughs> who bought it. Um, all right, I think that's pretty much it. Um, in case you guys didn't know, I've been uh, put, putting articles out on Facebook and Twitter. You know, I'm revamped the CryptoSaros.com website, a lot of articles, you know, articles about altcoins today. There's a one from Terra that was posted. Got some feature articles about, you know, layer two and what's happening in Latin America, some news articles, right? So if you guys haven't checked it out yet, make sure you do so. There's basically two articles coming up every single day, every single day. And uh, you know what? You don't want to miss it. And and I'm just going to throw this out there. If you love writing and you want to just guest post without shilling, right? But if you love writing, maybe about a new project, about something going on that you're passionate about, you want to guest post, send it, send it to me and I'll see how good it is and maybe I could get it listed, all right? So just throwing that out there. Um, what else is there? Nah, two, two other things. You know, since it's Saturday, I'm going to plug some of my sponsors. Number one is BlockFi. For those of you guys that, you know, you're just holding a crypto. You really don't want to trade it. You have no, no fear in your veins. You're just saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to stick it out, right? You might as well make some, make some money with your crypto. So if you put into BlockFi, you can earn up to 8.6%. Actually, it's more. It's 9.3% if you deposit USDT. But if it's USDC and some, I think, dies 8.6%, you can also deposit Litecoin, Chainlink, Bitcoin, Ethereum. There's a lot that you could deposit. And you basically let your crypto work for you. And you're just collecting interest. And there is a bonus. There is a bonus. So why not? Why not collect some free BDC in the process? And of course, of course, um, they also have their credit card too. So... Uh, check out BlockFi if you want to make some money with your crypto just by just just leaving it and depositing it there, right? So you check out my check out my URL below, and also one of my newer sponsors, NordVPN. If you want to protect yourself, you don't want your traffic to be analyzed by by Google, which 
tracks everything that you do or anyone else or your trading history and you don't want people to know where you're trading and what you're trading and where you're sending it to and all that good stuff, which is being tracked, by the way, unless you're using a VPN, you know, why not use NordVPN and track all that? And you could do it on your mobile, too. It's not just for your desktop. You could do it on your mobile, too. So if you guys do a lot of trading on your mobile phone, right, you have your KuCoin app, your Binance app, your Coinbase app, your Gemini app, all these apps, right? And you don't want people to know where you're coming from. Well, you could put that on your phone, too. So check them out. All right. That's pretty much it. Let's do some uh let's do some QA. Let's do some QA. <sighs> Let me scroll up here before all these super chats disappear. Thoughts on hollow and T fuel? T fuel is gonna be big. Theta and T fuel is gonna be big because of their Theta 3.0. I'm working with them right now, hopefully to get some NFTs created. So they're 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 really going gung ho with NFTs. So I'm gonna work with them. Hollow, I'm not so much sure of. They're they're still building out their new chain, so might be some time before they get real traction there. Uh, what are your thoughts? Typo asked, what are your thoughts on Gary V's V friends NFTs? That caught me by surprise. Honestly, I don't think anyone wants those NFTs because they're just like silly doodles, but Gary V is smart. Those are basically tickets, access to his V cons and access to himself. I don't know. How, he's like spreading himself so thin. Like if you buy those NFTs to get access to him, some of them are like Zoom meetings for a year or something. Like it's crazy amount of time. So I think it's just more of just access to him and his VCon. I don't think anyone really cares about his NFTs. It's not like they're going to go up in value that much. I don't think. But you know what? It's Gary Vee, and he's a very smart guy. So maybe he can make it happen. I, I've, uh, I'm connected to him on LinkedIn. So I'm like, hey, uh, Gary, I want you to come to GeorgeCon. You know, I want you to be a speaker. He has not replied, but maybe he will. Maybe he will. Um, Chad's, uh, BlockFi earning better than safety on Ledger. Well, BlockFi does use custodians who are insured, but of course, even them, they're not as safe as putting, leaving things on your Ledger. Nothing is going to be safer than having crypto on your own Ledger. Let's just put it that way. No one, nothing will be safer than that. Not even, not even custodians that are cold storage because ultimately it's still, in their hands on a ledger it's in your hands right but you know the risk level is still minimized by being on cold storage and custodian um you know so hopefully that answers that uh brandon asks during the u.s and max nations cup final former u.s national team member mentions he's never selling his bdc at halftime or pre-match, did you watch? No, I did not. I'm not. I'm not a soccer fan at all. So, but that's good. And I'm. I'm sure there's a lot of people that have that stance. I. I have that stance. I. I know a lot of people have that stance. It's like Bitcoin is just one of those things you just hold long term. Honestly, the best thing to do is just hold it, and and just you know put into BlockFi or put on your ledger and just forget about it. Just don't. You don't, you don't want to touch it. And you want to basically buy as much as you can over time. Dollar cost average into that. Because Bitcoin is going to go much higher. It's the scarcest thing out there. Scarcest asset, digital currency, commodity, uh, whatever you want to define it as. It's the scarcest out there. It's only going to get more scarce. Now you have freaking countries that's adopting it. I mean... It's 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 a big deal. And no matter how much FUD BlackRock and JP Morgan and and Elon and uh, Elizabeth Warren, you know, China, it doesn't matter how much FUD is out there. We will get past this. This is a, just a temporary, temporary blip in Bitcoin's history. Um Opinion on Cody, Akira, they seem to be uh, related to Cardano. Cody is. Akira is, uh, they're, they're still relatively new. They're still building out. But Cody is, um, Cardano's um, ADA pay is backed by Cody. So that's pretty big. That's a pretty big deal. 
Who will support bankers in this crypto revolution? How is XRP so popular? You have channels that's dedicated to XRP. And Jeff uh, asked earlier, will XRP break out soon? Here, here's the thing about XRP. It's a love and hate relationship with XRP, in my opinion. Uh, XRP, if it settles its SEC lawsuit, will pump. I know that 100% it will pump. But on a grand scheme of things, versus its previous high of 370, it's still nowhere close to it. While most altcoins have shattered through their 2017-2018 highs, XRP still has not. And the reason being, there's just a lot of people that just don't like how they operate. Ripple operates on the fact that they sell XRP to financial companies. That's their business model. So they do release more and more into the system. And, and Ripple owns more than 51% of the circuit in supply, which means it's not, it's not decentralized from a, from a token perspective, from a supply perspective. But XRP still has a thriving uh, ledger. There's still a lot of support. People love it. And Flare Network also, you know, forked off of XRP Ledger. They seem to be gaining a lot of strength too. Uh, but ultimately, when you have a collective group group of people that really believe in something and they don't sell, you know, that 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 holds a lot of weight. And that's the case with XRP. So whether or not financial institutions and banks of the world will fully embrace XRP um, as a bridge currency. That's still very early to say and it's unknown. But whether or not that happens, if you have people that just simply keep buying and holding it, that will cause it to go up. And here's another good thing about XRP is they are uh, set in supply at $100 billion. So it's not going to be more than that. In fact, XRP is deflationary. There are certain times where they burn XRP. So those are good and bad to the XRP, trying to be neutral there. There are good aspects to it and very bad aspects to it. Just depends on what you value more. Uh, what are your thoughts about the new NX? Um, I'm not very impressed. Yeah, the NX is very, very dated. Lexus needs to update it. It's been around for a few, a while. They just like did cosmetic changes, but it's very, very small. The NX is very, very small, very small. And, um, it just the uh, infotainment system is dated and there's just a lot of stuff that was just so so arjuna what's your take on warex with yesterday's news of money laundry also i i love i'm a crypto amateur you're my hero well thank you uh wazir i, I don't even know how to say it wazir x um it's binance owned exchange that's in india now, India, recently, there's news reports about they're turning crypto friendly. But what held me back was there's always this thing, back and forth. Uh, are they turning pro-Bitcoin or pro-crypto or anti? And then, the, you know, it goes back and forth, back and forth, right? I think El, uh, El Salvador does change things a bit. Um, a lot of countries are now looking at crypto more seriously. So hopefully it turns India around and makes it so that they do fully embrace it. But who knows? Who knows? You're from India, so you tell me. Some people tell me that'll never happen. Some people tell me it could happen. So we'll we'll just see. We'll see. Um scale is like a you know, like a layer two solution. I don't hear many people talk about scale. Um you know, the, the most the biggest layer two is of course Polygon, which has just dominated this past year. But there's a lot of other smaller ones like Scale, OMG, um, and several others, and they're they're just kinda hanging around. I think Ave for mid to long term is is not bad. They're I don't think they're gonna lose you know, their biggest competitor is Compound, and they're kind of neck and neck. I think they're going to stay around for a while. Now, it'll be interesting because some of the Binance Smart Chain stuff has really caught up really fast. Recently, you know, more weakness because, of, quite frankly, there's one after another. There's just way too many hacks. Seems like a lot of these Binance Smart Chain projects just didn't get audited right, or they didn't go through security, so they would get a hack one left one after another, but... Um, you do have competition to these ETH-based ones. 
Um, but the good thing is they have all moved to some kind of layer two solution. So it helps with congestion and so forth. So I think they're still going to be around like mid long term holds. Yeah. Yeah. How does flow chart or TA look? Uh, flow is one of those things. It's it's it, it should be a lot better because it's not it's not um, being sold in the U.S. So I don't know if it's because of their their token sale or however however they they did it before. You know they're not open to the U.S. If they were, I think they would do a lot better. I think they would do a lot better. But flow is created by the guys who created Crypto Kitties. You know NBA Top Shot is running on top. You could see. Uh, Coinbase has also invested in them. Flow is a fantastic project. But I think we just have to wait for better exchanges. Like if Coinbase adds them, which could very well happen in the near future, that will cause them to explode. All right. I think that's it. Um, overall, guys, Anchor, kind of so-so. AMP, I do like. I'm actually getting help from someone to write an AMP article on Cryptos R Us. So stay tuned for that. All right. Overall, guys, uh, you know what? Bitcoin is just kind of boring right now. All coins did, uh, they did come down more so yesterday than today. In fact, Bitcoin dominance came down. Yesterday was up to 45%. Now it's down a whole 1.3%. So that's actually pretty good. Pretty good. I know things are overall down for the moment. I know that because there's still a lot of a lot of FUD that's being driven around, right? A lot of fear. It's causing people to have doubt and not buy in when they should. When things are down this significantly, this is a great buying opportunity. But that's why, you know, the greed, the fear index is still high. And you still have JP Morgan's of the world that is still causing FUD. Right, but this is the time to look past all that, to to have the obedience and discipline and conviction to stay the course. Right, you know that Bitcoin and crypto is transformative and could definitely transform your life. It could build life changing wealth, and that's ultimately what you're looking for. Not quick gains. You're building life changing wealth. Right. And, uh, and, you know, we got to just stick together, stay the course, and not focus on the bad and focus on the good. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. As always, smash the like, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I'll see you guys tonight, 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right? Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.